Scythian Tactics and Strategy, Scorched Earth Victories, Part 2. Fainting. Scythian tactics including fainting or withdrawing from either the battlefield or even the region. An example of fainting comes from the battle mentioned in Part 1, the Battle of Carai in 53 BCE. The Roman historian Plutarch mentions that the Parthian horse archers would not engage the Roman forces during battle, but would retreat, luring the Roman forces to follow. The trap was set and the Romans thought victory was in hand. However, the fleeing horse archers turned and loosed their arrows upon the pursuing Romans. The Romans in the pursuit soon realized they had made a terrible mistake, but it was too late. Nothing could be done to make a defensive stand. Withdrawal allowed the faint tactic to be used with proficiency due to the Roman ignorance of their enemy. The Romans would try to advance, but with every attempt, the Parthian horse archers' constant pelting with what seemed to be an endless supply of arrows would keep them in place. Parthian camel units resupplied the horse archers by exchanging empty quivers for full ones, and then, uh, full ones, then and returning to their position. During this uh, monstrous, never-ending never ending event, the Romans would try to break the horse archers' formation, only to be countered by heavy Parthian cavalry known as cataphract, which acted as the anvil to the Parthian hammer arrows. The Battle of Carai was death by pieces for the Romans. Therefore, when it comes to the fainting tactic, do not watch for the visible hand, but rather the invisible one. The Parthian Scythians were notoriously successful in the fainting technique before the Battle of Carai. Afterward, the countering measure to this tactic went largely ignored until Alexander the Great demonstrated a reversal. One could make the argument that the Romans had faulty intelligence before Carai, but this would be unfair, although true to a certain extent. The truth of the matter is that the Romans invaded a land they did not know, looking to conquer a people they did not understand. In the end, both Rome and Parthia would continue to bash each other as the years turned into centuries, but neither side truly dominated the other. Defense in depth. Defense in depth is the most successful is most successful if your nation is rather large and unproductive, as in the case of the Scythians, who valued land and the ability to roam rather than the luxuries of the cities like Athens or Nineveh. The Scythians did seem to have cities, but mobile villages may be a more accurate description. As for the lazy luxuries of life, some settled, but the majority roamed about. Um, according to Herodotus, quote, We Scythians have neither towns nor cultivated lands, which might induce us, through fear of their being taken or ravaged, to be in a hurry to fight with you. But Herodotus, end quote, but Herodotus also states, quote, having neither cities nor forts, and carrying their dwellings with, with them wherever they go. A custom, moreover, one and all of them, to shoot from horseback, and living not by husbandry, but on their cattle, their wagons, the only houses they possess." End quote. The Scythians did have slaves, according to Herodotus, who were blind and whose primary task was being a shepherd. Additionally, Herodotus also mentions the Scythians who grew corn and onions, which indicate that agriculture was common among some of the tribes. Therefore, the notion that the Scythians did not have cities or villages is partially untrue, depending on the Scythian tribe, of course. The Scythians that Darius the Great, the Persian king Darius the Great, attacked did not have cultivated lands or towns that could be beneficial to Darius' forces. The Scythians conducted a scorched earth policy as Darius' army marched further inland, following after them. The Scythians understood that an army marches on its belly, and so do the animals accompanying them. What Darius could not use would be a weapon against his forces. The strategy would be defense in depth, scorched earth policy the tactic, and the outcome would be starvation. Starvation through burning was the preferred method used to rid of the Persians. The Scythians understood that they could defeat the enemy by allowing the land to be swallowed to be the land to swallow them both physically and mentally. Darius was ignorant of the people he wished to conquer. He showed knowledge he showed no knowledge of the people or the train he was about to invade. Because of this attitude by Darius, his brother um, Artabanus warned that the proposed campaign to conquer the European Scythians was far too risky. He was right. And even if it was successful, the economic benefits were limited. 
nevertheless, Darius had to learn the hard way. For the Scythians, it was a good way to prevent a possible second invasion. Now, as mentioned, the Scythians used land to their advantage, knowing that Darius would follow as long as the bait was present. The Scythians burnt all that grew, causing Darius to follow his enemy across burnt terrain in hopes of finding food for both his men and animals. The Scythians conduct hit-and-run attacks during mealtime and even at night, preventing the men from eating or even sleeping, irritating them uh, ever more. The Scythians knew that as long as Darius followed in pursuit, he would gain nothing, not even an engagement. Psychological and physical attrition would set in would set in by attacking the enemy's stomach and his need for rest, causing irrationality among the troops and further de um, uh, deterioration of the chain of command. In the end, the Scythians won a great victory, but not engaging the enemy in a conventional warfare, but but beating the Persians through starvation, sleep deprivation, among other attributes, since an army can move only for so long before it needs to fuel up again in both rest and food. But I, by denying both, the Scythians utilized a form of defense and depth that saved them from Persian conquest. If you like this article, give me a um, well, mini lecture. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave your comments down below. Of course, no fighting, no arguing, no need for that. Um, I will leave references at the bottom in, in the description with links to those books if you'd be if you're interested in in uh, viewing or purchasing and uh, I will see you next time